We're good. We're rolling. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Safari Pedal Show. I'm your host, Abby. If this is your first time here, welcome to the crazy wild safari podcast zoo thing wild bandwagon. It's great to have you. I have been anticipating today's episode and today's guest for a hot minute. We have never had a DJ, producer, combo on the show before, but today is the day. Today is the day that the Safari Pedal Show changes forever and that happens. Sammy Sosa, who is a, like I said, producer, DJ, she also runs a DJ collective and does so many cool things. And I am so pumped to hear about how that's been going, how being a DJ influences her productions and vice versa. And I just have a lot to ask and a lot to learn. So I'm really pumped and I feel like there's not much more I can add to this intro. So, so guys, please give a very warm safari welcome to Sammy Sosa. Hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> welcome to the show. What's up? Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to chat with you. And yeah, I'm, I'm excited. Same here. I really appreciate you being on. So I guess before we dive into like all of the amazing, cool things that you do, let's first hear a little bit of your audio life story, who you are, what you do. And I guess we can take it from there. Music has always been a part of my life. Like my, my parents have always like, you know, played music all the time. I was always around it. My grandparents had a piano in their house. Like it was just like I was always around music. And so I started taking piano lessons when I was young and kind of, you know, did classical piano for a while, trained classically. And I kind of took a break from that for <laughs> a little bit. I, I used to write classical pieces and stuff like on my own and on staff paper. And it was, yeah, it was a lot. Then I kind of took a break from that, got into sports, which um, was interesting that would that took up like a huge chunk of my childhood I feel like that was like my main focus a lot I would play piano here and there but that was like my main focus and I earned a division one scholarship to Ohio State I played there for a year and ended up quitting for music too so which is also crazy like I I was like I'm gonna do field hockey until I can't anymore because there's a limit and then I'm gonna do music after and I, it got to the point where I was like I don't want to wait until I'm done field hockey to focus on music I got into production a little bit before you know going to school for field hockey and that was when it kind of started clicking with me and singing and stuff so I quit and then was looking to transfer I kind of finished out my year online it was during COVID as well it was my freshman year of college so that was already like crazy decommitted and found the Rock Nation School of Music and since then it's I've been producing singing and then I just recently got into the uh, this like collective like running this collective and um like djing and stuff but it's been like mostly production and writing and singing leading up to now but that's like a very like short version <laughs> i guess of like yeah how i got into like music and everything so yeah that's awesome so i want to start by diving into the collective that you run dugout radio let's hype it up y'all hell yeah <laughs> um like yeah. <laughs> what like what inspired you to run a collective and how has that been going for you it was interesting because i i never played softball or anything I, i've always been like such like a sports person you know growing up and stuff but my family's super into baseball like they we have like a big like yankees um red Sox rivalry and stuff so it's just very like baseball family and my brother plays and everything so growing up my dad's nickname for me was Sammy Sosa like the baseball player so he would always be like Sammy Sosa like he would always call me that so then I kind of wanted that to be my producer name like DJ name and stuff so that's kind of how I came up initially with like that and I started DJing first and I actually randomly messaged this venue called X Pizza they're kind of like their own collective they unfortunately just had to close down their place but um they offered me a, a residency in october so that's when i started to play there regularly and book my own lineups there and i was like i want to call it something like i don't want to just like book the lineups and be like oh like x pizza like we're i wanted to like make it like my own collective and stuff so i was like thinking of things that i could name it and i was gonna be like sammy sosa radio and then yeah, and, and I just kept the baseball theme for Dugout Radio, and 
yeah so it's been going well I mean we've been I've been booking a lots of different venues and people uh, this one video got like over 300,000 views and that was like crazy just about promoting like my radio show that I do here and stuff and it's a like freeform radio in Bushwick in Brooklyn it's cool it's just the response was like so overwhelming and I'm the only one running it so it was, I like my friend helped me make this like spreadsheet of like all of the people submitting and there was like 150 like different submissions and it was crazy and there's only two slots a month so it's like just <laughs> trying to manage that <laughs> so then it's like I take some of those like listen to the mixes and book them for like other like shows or like live performances uh at venues around Brooklyn and a little bit into Manhattan too but it, it's been doing pretty good I feel like the traction and just like the people that have been coming and stuff I've been meeting in person at the shows and everyone's just super supportive and kind and like the DJ community is great here so it, I would it's, it's been going pretty good it's been a lot being in school working and doing this that's why like this week I've been kind of like relaxing a little sticking a little break on the social media because I post like every day so I've been just trying to like relax a little bit but yeah it's like it's pretty exciting and I'm like happy with where it's going so that's amazing well first of all congrats on like it really popping off I remember I think that's it's either that or it was your baseball remix that I found your page so oh, okay. it definitely <laughs> it definitely it definitely popped off kind of diving into your DJ producer thing it's like you have a really unique style and sound um, kind of diving into your sound in general like how does being a DJ influence the way you produce and vice versa i feel like since i've been djing the structure of how my like my production and stuff and just how you know i think like in dj mind now like how am i going to transition this into the next song that i make especially recently i'm working on an album um it's all like liquid drum and bass and jungle some vocals and stuff but i'm really like focusing a lot on how i can make the song transition and how it can keep like people energized throughout and it's not it's it changes throughout the song like production wise and like different sections and yeah I feel like that's how DJing has really changed my production I also think mixing wise it's hard for me to really take the time to like focus on mixing and mastering because it's so intricate but I, I really need to start doing that more and I've been trying to focus on that as well so I can sound good on those big speakers and that's another thing that's been like influencing production wise on like the technical side and and yeah I would say DJing for my production has been like one of the best things to happen to like my production but also going to shows going to like other dj shows and listening to like how they transition and mix and stuff so yeah for sure that's sick and from going to other shows and seeing other djs like have there been any kind of specific like things that you've or moments that like really stood out to you in terms of like i like that they did this specifically or that or something the dj sets that i like the most are the ones that i can't tell when the transition happens or just like it flows so well i went to go see he's like this 90s like jungle producer artist and he ltj buckham and he does his his set was just i was just like I was just like <laughs> listening to it. I was like, holy crap. Like you could definitely tell when like the song, like Ch obviously it was like a different song, but his transitions were so fluent. And that's even just, it was just recently I went to the show. I, I feel like even just then it's like made my production and like the way that I view how I want to like transition my songs differently too. That I mean, yeah, definitely something that keeps my energy up. It's not like a super like hard cut transition or, you know, like I feel like there's moments for that. But my favorite and something that like really has like influenced me is just when it, everything like flows really well. Because my sound and the things that I gravitate towards are like very like melodic type music. I, I, I do like the hard stuff too, but like liquid jungle, all that stuff is like my favorite. So I think that's like where my ear goes. That's sick. And what kind of got you into the jungle liquid drum and bass scene? Because like you have a really, really cool sound. So like 
how did that happen and who inspires you like artist wise last summer i was like getting into a lot of electronic music my boyfriend was kind of just like i was listening to a lot of like just like those like more fast paced like electronic music and he was like you should listen to liquid and i was like okay so then i looked up this like liquid drum and bass playlist and i was like i like never heard anything like that before obviously and i was like oh, oh my gosh and then i kind of dove deeper and then found jungle and like break break core and break beat and i was like okay like this is what i need to do like <laughs> So, yeah, and then literally last summer, all the only, literally probably to the point where I was in the car with my mom and she was like, this, like, you're only playing this artist. I was, like, playing Mia Archives, like, the all, so, like, I only played her, like, and my mom was like, all right, can we, like, play something else? Because it is, it is, like, I feel like Jungle and Liquid, it can get, like, annoying sometimes, you know, like, if you listen to it, it's, like, like, all, like, the, like, the BPM is just, like, so intense. High blood pressure. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, so you really have to be, like, in the mood, like, even, like, when I am producing, like, I have to take breaks because I'm, like, no pun intended, but, <laughs> like, I have to take breaks. <laughs> yeah <laughs> I'm so gonna because edit that in so for much. sure to the video <laughs> yeah I'm sorry that was pretty yeah. corny but yeah oh no it was great it was great <laughs> I would say Mia Archives LTJ Buckham um Ronnie Size Tim Reaper there's I could keep going there's so many just all of like the old like the nine Mia is obviously new age and stuff but what I prefer listening to is like the melodic ones with like super hard drums and like crispy drums and I really do like the super like intense stuff but it like if you listen to it too much like over and over again it gets like ah like it can so, like give yeah. you like a seizure <laughs> yeah it literally literally like have a glass of water on hand no, at all times <laughs> uh-huh <laughs> that's great I feel like people that don't know the genre are kind of scared <laughs> to like yeah, well, it's funny because even like booking in New York, I've, it's a very like UK sound, I would say. Booking around here, they're like, oh, you want to play Jungle? I'm like, yeah, they're like, <laughs> they're, they're like, in, they're like really getting some more like garage, UK garage and stuff, but they're like house techno vibes here in the city, so. Yeah, it sounds pretty, pretty sad. I see that. Like, uh -huh. <laughs> how, how like big would you say the, the scene is then? for that type of music it's very underground i would say like there are like a handful of uh like promoters and par like people that you know put on the shows and stuff there's some new age people that are playing jungle and stuff but i feel like at least from what i've seen it's a lot of like older people like really like with the underground sound how would you rate the music scene in brooklyn it's interesting because manhattan at least from the places that i've played they're more like underground in Brooklyn. But I would say for me personally, I feel like for my specific taste in music, I like Brooklyn better because I hear way more of a range of me. It's not just house. I mean, you know, so I yeah. would say rating like out of 10, like or just. Yeah. I would say like eight. <laughs> eight. That's solid. That's solid. Yeah. Kick out the house <laughs> in Manhattan. I feel like a movement is yeah. starting yeah <laughs> from this episode a revolution <laughs> we'll right <see>. yeah <laughs> we'll start to pick up guys you can hop on while it's uh cool and funky and fresh <laughs> i feel like it would be cool for it to not to go full mainstream i think that if it goes full mainstream then it's just going to turn into house you know like if it goes <laughs> yeah. so, like and people are gonna be like oh i'm so sick of jungle like what, let's do something else like so yeah but i i like where it is now i think it's cool i definitely would love to live in like London or something for a few years just to like see how it is over there and stuff because it's crazy the scene there is insane so it's like the OG scene. yeah <laughs> <laughs> back mm -hmm. to the roots it's like yeah. so <laughs> it's so funny I need to like in the edit I'm so gonna like do a whole play on the house music everything just shape shifts <laughs> to house music well, if it becomes yes. mainstream <laughs> <laughs> no for real though like you don't want it to be overplayed or you'll go see. full mainstream it's true you'll then... see even lizzie mcalpine will shapeshift to house music somehow yeah <laughs> this show in general is 
pretty much centered around the concept of starting out in the music industry and being up and coming and like you do really cool things so like do you have any tips or lessons from your audio and journey that you want to drop to new producers djs everyone in between audio people yeah i would say i was just talking with my boyfriend about this last night this is kind of like just advice in in general and then i'll go like a little bit more in specific but you can be a super talented producer a super talented artist and if you don't have the drive and work ethic in consistency every single day even on days where you might be having a like not the best like personal day or just like with mental side and if you get up every day and you stay consistent and like take the emotional side out of that like that's what's gonna like allow you to get to the next level you know i feel like artists and like producers and musicians are so emo you have to be so emotional like you put that into like your art and like you make your art in that sense and i think just with consistency and hard work and just like getting up every day and if it's something that you like being able to do that and kind of having that mindset is just like so important at least for me like that's what i feel like has gotten me to like push farther like i've I've posted almost every day for like over a year now like it on tiktok and then like moving to instagram and it doesn't even have to be social media maybe it's like making something making a beat like every day or something like that every day is like just like super important i think just to stay consistent because if you're not consistent then it's not gonna you're not gonna get the same results as if you just get up every day and and do what you need to do and then on the side of specific like music i would say for me the when i listen and uh, get inspiration from you know like other artists and stuff i really try to expand and not just focus on one person or just hear like i listen to like all different types of music you know and i and i bring in elements of different things that i've you know listened to or even play like even just like with my classical upbringing just like that theory and and different elements of melodies and classical music i think just not just like subjecting yourself or just putting yourself in a box with genres like I pull inspiration from like R&B, like all these different types of genres into like my liquid jungle production that I like love to do. So yeah. I got to give a clap for that one. (laughs) Thank you. you. Very, very, I, that was very inspirational. And I really love and appreciate what you said about consistency. And um, Mm -hmm. that's probably just from speaking, speaking to people that have done music full-time that's kind of been their key they've Mm -hmm. said to like having a long-lasting career especially in such a wild industry that's yeah a jungle no pun intended (laughs) hey Hey. (laughs) another moment for the edit guys but um but yeah drop in drop in on hard truths to kind of sum up the whole topic of producing djing running a freaking collective which is sick and liquid drum and bass and all of that wonderful stuff i always love to ask our amazing guest to either drop a piece of advice or something you want to say feel free to freestyle to the amazing studio animal viewers watching (laughs) so what do you want to say to the safari world be who you want to be don't let anybody change how you feel about things how you want to go about your music career and the things that you create don't let somebody saying you should make this type of music or you should change your name like I've gotten that like you should you should change like who you are like change like your artist name like stay like what you feel is right on the inside like stay to that and and that goes literally for anything in life like don't let anybody tell you who you should and shouldn't be if you feel that it's right inside so yeah that's like my advice for everything so amazing i'm gonna clap once again thank you (laughs) amazing that was that was really inspirational and it's and i completely agree you know yourself better than anyone so i'm super super pumped for this episode you're the first dj that's been on the show so let's go so the first (laughs) dj first collective boss oh my gosh drum and bass (laughs) 
liquid jungle everything so i'm super (laughs) super pumped about this and i really appreciate your time and you hopping on the pod yeah no i appreciate you this is so fun and like i'd love to chat more too like in the future like this was so fun (laughs) absolutely